On Vaudeville, Charlie was really dressed like a little newsboy with a little sweater and a little, little like soft cloth hat. Um, Edgar Bergen upgraded his act when he went to supper clubs and he wanted to make Charlie more sophisticated. One of the great ingenious ideas was putting these guys in tuxedos. You know, that was one of the things because uh, that gave a certain kind of sophistication to an extremely unsophisticated act. And that became a kind of uh, emblem, you know, f for that act. And I think when they were in tuxedos, that was in some sense the best of the best of those acts. It took, who could have ever guessed? I mean, and then he became sort of the toast of New York. Here? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, 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 Bergen. Quiet, can't you see I'm trying to drink? Yes, but uh, honey, honey didn't give Charlie Charlie any beer. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon, I'll get you some. <laughs> <laughs> he you are, Charlie, dear. Oh, last but not least, I thank you. I, uh, I, 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 I. Too much beer isn't good for little boys. Too much beer, no. Uh-huh. Well, you certainly took care of that. <laughs> Prior to Charlie's incarnation with the top hat and monocle, uh, Edgar Bergen did do several um, short films, even before the radio success, with he and Charlie for the Vitaphone Corporation. Um, they were just little short films that played before movies. He created in Charlie McCarthy a living, breathing character. Charlie's not a puppet. He's not a puppet, even a puppet with a personality. He's a person. It's not Edgar Bergen and his dummy, Charlie McCarthy. It's Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Easy, Professor, easy, yes. So brave. So what? You know, I'm quite a cutter up there myself, you know. Hachi, hachi, hachi. I get it. Oh, well, will you come down out of the stratosphere and park the lips under the snuggle? <laughs> <laughs> Bergen did work hard to create the illusion of life in Charlie, and he wanted the public to see Charlie as a real boy, and he was very successful at that. Uh, he would do magazine I interviews, and they'd have photographs of Charlie and Edgar um, flying their plane together. Ed um, Edgar Bergen was an avid pilot, and he would have a picture of himself and Charlie. Most importantly, always making Charlie appear to be a living, breathing character in the picture, not just the puppet on the guy's arm. Anything he could do for the public to see this as really a father-son, uh, he did it. Um, I think some of the public even took that further years later, and they thought he really did live that way, but he didn't. It was all part of the publicity. He was really um, a pro at publicity. And I think that's why Edgar Bergen transcended what he did because Charlie McCarthy transcended what he was. Charlie got more fan mail than Edgar ever did. Again, the whole point of ventriloquism is to create the illusion of life. And Bergen, perhaps more than anyone else, did that in Charlie and Mortimer and Effie and his other friends.